Well, I had an opportunity several years ago to sit down with Mr. Andy Williams. They call him Mr. Christmas. And I really cherished those times watching the Andy Williams Christmas specials that would come on television. It was really an honor for me to meet Andy. Right now we have joining us by phone, Mr. Gospel Music, Bill Gaither. Bill, Merry Christmas. Byron, Merry Christmas to you. I also had the privilege of meeting Andy. He wanted to see our concert. We were in Springfield, and it was close to uh, Branson, where he uh, works. So he called me on the phone, because he's an old harmony man. He used to sing with his brothers. And he says, that vocal band is awfully good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Something about Andy Williams at Christmas time is a child getting my little feet at PJs on and turning the, the black and white television back in the late 60s, you know, and watching those specials. But, Bill, you're coming to South Haven, which is our next door neighbor to the Lander Center, Saturday, December 10th, for the Gaither Homecoming Christmas Spectacular. We are, and uh, we're not just coming just with the vocal band, which is, I think, is, is, is wonderful by itself with David Phelps, Wes Hampton. Adam Crabb, Todd Suttles, but we also this time have the Martins with us, and we have the Isaacs and people who uh, love family harmony. It doesn't get any better than those two groups. And then the crazy character, he's like a fungus. We can't get rid of him. Mark, <laughs> Mark Lowry wants to do the Christmas tour. He called me in March. He said, Bill, you know, I got people who want me for the Christmas dates, but I'd rather be on yours. And, and I said, come on, buddy. So he and Buddy uh, Green will both be there. They, uh, you know, Mark wrote the lyric, Buddy wrote the music to one of the most beautiful new Christmas songs in the last 50 years, Mary Did You Know? Yes. And uh, so they will be there, Kevin Williams, uh, Charlotte Ritchie, Gene McDonald, and we're in Gene McDonald's uh, backyard because he grew up, what do you call the boot? Is it the boot hill of Missouri? It's the boot hill, right, yeah. Okay, well, I think he's from Kennett or somewhere up in that area. Came from a singing family. He's good. Man, we have got a line up that night, and we're excited about it. Well, I know you always do. How do you decide when you're looking at putting a tour together, especially I know you do the homecoming concerts and have for so many years, but when you look at Christmas and look at coming to South Haven at the Lander Center, what goes into your thoughts of who you want to invite to join you on stage? Well, throughout the year most of our concerts are just with the vocal band so at that point uh, we uh, always have Charlotte Ritchie uh, with us and we have uh, Gene McDonald and Kevin Williams uh, and, and our band and everything but when we come to the Christmas dates we just look at the, you know, at the people who do good Christmas material Isaacs have a wonderful Christmas repertoire and then the Martins, it just doesn't, doesn't get any better than the Martins and what they do. So, so, and, and then we also need a core for this uh, after intermission when we all sing together. We just need people who are all on the same page and love the Lord and want to express that and be part, you know, of a bigger uh, program. We, we take about two hours to go through the uh, first part of the program, and then we take about a 15-minute break and then come back and do about an hour with everybody together and end up with, uh, you know, we pass out these lights. Uh, oh, yeah, I still have mine Yeah, from last time, yeah. yeah we, we used to do it with candle lights until Mark Lowry burned the building down. <laughs> so we can't do that anymore. But, but we have these lights, and at the end, uh, everybody says the biggest part of the program they love is when we get to the end and, and they look at see all those lights on, uh, on songs like Silent Night and Oh, Holy Night and uh, Oh, Come. Uh, 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 Emmanuel, they say, man, that is one beautiful sight. And we do secular stuff too, White Christmas and uh, What a Wonderful World. You know, at, through the year, we all have our musical tastes. Some like contemporary, some like Southern, some like, uh, you know, classical. But boy, Christmas time. Everybody is traditional. They want traditional stuff at Christmas time. Like that tradition. Hey, speaking of traditions, what about traditions around the Gaither home? What do you and Gloria like to do? I know you've got plenty of grandkids to celebrate. Well, first of all, we start with Thanksgiving, and we had a, a two of our three kids uh, and 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 their and their, and and their families for Thanksgiving. And then we always have a you know extended family who are in. Thanksgiving is a beautiful time for us. Sometimes the kids say, "I think I like that better than Christmas." <laughs> <laughs> we we take a uh, we put the food on the table, and then 
we go around the room, and sometimes it's an hour by the time you get through, everybody's saying what they're grateful for, what they're thankful for. It starts there, and then I think it, it, it carries out. There's a whole period of, of, of just simply saying, we are blessed, you know, yes. we're grateful for this. And um, that carries through Christmas. And so uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff with the family. And then, and then at Christmas, uh, t- t- two of the families are in uh, Nashville, and Amy and her family are in uh, Massachusetts. So we'll spend Christmas probably in Nashville this year. Hey, when you talked about the Gaither Christmas Spectacular again at the Lander Center on Saturday, December 10th, we're telling all of our Bot Radio Network listeners to make sure you come out. But there's one aspect of it that's really a highlight to me. Drove down to Tupelo when you were in our area last year, and it was the intermission. You talked about that 15-minute intermission. What's really pretty special about that time, Bill, is you get an opportunity to actually visit with those who sang on stage. I got a chance to meet David Phelps. I got a chance to get a picture with Adam Crabb. And it's like they really had a good time with the guests that were there, and they make it so fun and special. Yeah, and they're really great at that, and I'm glad they are, because at my age, at intermission, I'm just going back and getting my breath. So I, get <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I tell the guys, I, I don't tell them to go out there, but they'll come back and they'll say, Bill, some of the most beautiful people, and they and they said, be sure to tell you thanks, be sure to say hi to you. I used to do that when I was younger, and uh, and I'll never forget George Johns telling me one time at the cathedral, uh, I said, you going out of intermission? He says, Bill, I can't do that and sing after <laughs> <laughs> so I, it, it, you know, Byron, I can't tell you how good it is for me to hear that from you because I hear that from a lot of the, uh, a lot of people saying, you know, we didn't get a chance to see you, but boy, we had a chance to talk to Wes Hampton, that he's the sweetest kid, and then Todd Suttles. Uh, by the time, in, in fact, we do these cruises, uh, we're going to go to Alaska this summer. By the end of the week, Todd has drunk coffee, I think, with everybody on the ship. You know, <laughs> everybody on the ship. And you know, and what great ambassadors! I'm glad they're good on stage, but I'm I'm more than happy that they're car- they're carrying out the ministry of Bill and Gloria, and that is caring about people and people on one to one, and they do that beautifully. And what a good report! Thanks for reporting that back to me. That's what it's all about, as people. You know, I was up in Branson a few weeks ago producing some Christmas specials for our network, and I got a chance to go see the Oak Ridge Boys in concert. For the first time. Boy, was it taking me back down memory lane. But they did a song, and I'm trying to remember what the song title was now, that you wrote specifically for them. It's a song called, my my, my favorite Christmas, they say, what's your favorite Christmas carol? And I say, I love all the carols. But I especially love the line from uh, Old Little Town of Bethlehem, where it says, the hopes and fears of all the years. Uh, rest in thee tonight. And so, and I, every time we get together with writers, I always say, the hopes, can we do something with the hopes and fears of all the years? Rest in thee tonight. So, Gerald Crabb, Adam's dad, who is also a writer, and I, we got together to write, and I said, you need to write a song. I said, I know Dwayne, I know Dwayne Allen's heart, and I know he loves. I mean, he cares about the working man. They, the Oak Ridge sang a lot of songs about the working man, the forgotten man, and, you know, made in America, yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And so we wrote those two verses. The first one was about a little guy, could be a little girl, could be a little boy, pressing his face against the window, waiting for his daddy to come home. And the mother is trying to fill the void of a single mom, being a both mom and dad. Mm but at Christmas is pretty tough. And so I love the chorus goes, uh, come on, and, 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 and she's just beyond herself. She doesn't know what to say, so she finally prays this prayer. Come on down, Lord Jesus. Please come on down. Come and heal this... Uh, 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 what's the next? Come and heal this uh, broken world and make it... Come heal this broken world and make it right. Oh. Come on down, Lord Jesus. Come on down. The hopes and fears of all the years still rest in you tonight. Oh, my. You know, Bill, I really sat there and tears were streaming down my face as the Oak Ridge Boys brought that song to stage there in Branson. As we look at divisiveness and the hurt and pain in the world we live in right now, isn't that the message that the world needs to hear? (laughs) 
Come on down, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes. Come, Come heal this broken, my, heal my broken world and make it right. And that's our only prayer. And 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 when people come to me about stories of cancer and brokenness and divorce and, and you know having to raise kids, they just lost their job. I, I I say to them, I don't know how you feel, and I've learned that a long time ago. Don't go to a funeral and tell somebody I know how you feel. Only God knows how He feels. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I know you mean right by saying I know how you feel, but only God knows how He has worked His way through this particular problem. And all I can say is this, the hopes and fears of all the years still rest in Jesus tonight. And that's yes. what we can pray. Come on down, Lord Jesus. Come on down. And uh, But that's good to hear that, Byron. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, the first call I'm going to make when I get done is to Dwayne and say, listen, your message got through to a radio man in Memphis. <laughs> it sure did. Hey, when you mentioned collaborating a moment ago, Bill, on when you collaborate, I'm sure, with different folks on music projects, writing a song, a whether it be on the road or wherever you might be. Can you think of maybe a specific time, who were you with and what were you doing when you maybe sensed God's presence in a more unusual way in that time? Well, in creativity, first of all, you got to start out, whether or not it's a secular song or a religious tune, I mean, all inspiration comes from God, and I believe that. And sometimes it comes out in a love song, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I, you know, when I hear Ann Murray sing "You Needed Me," and she gets to that line where she says, "So high I could almost see eternity," you know, the writer of that song, I don't know who it was, had to have a glimpse of uh, the eternal perspective when he wrote that, you know, when he wrote that song. So, so first of all, all creativity comes from God, and then when you can be, when you can put two creative people or three creative people in the same room who are plugged in to the same source, Yes, a good thing's going to happen. Mm. Daryl Crabb loves the Lord, you know. And so we get together, and pretty soon, when that kind of thing happens, it's happened with uh, Gerald. I, I co-write with Larry Gatlin. But when that happens, Larry's always rubbing his arms. And he's looking, <laughs> looking to hair on my arms. <laughs> he, said, he said, that's a God. That's a God thing. You know? <laughs> Oh, my. I cannot tell you, Byron, how much we understand that, and mm. everybody who writes the song. The, you, you know, one of, the, one of the greatest gospel songs of the last century was written by a country guy, Chris Christopherson. Please help me, Jesus. I've wasted it so. Help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Now that I know that I need... At, at that point, I don't know what his life is otherwise, but at, at that point, he was in the flow of the Spirit. <laughs> yes. How many times have we have sung that song and said, yeah, me too, Lord, <laughs> please help me. You know? mm, Mom, we need that help. So, uh, yeah, that's a, special, that's a special time when that all comes together. And the uh, tune that you're talking about, the Oak Ridge, uh, rest, in, uh, rest in You Tonight, is one of those moments where God came down. You know, I was talking to a pastor in an interview just the other day, and he was talking about his father had abandoned his mother and him when he was only three months old. And it's that song that I'm sure you've heard by Chris Tomlin, Good, Good Father. He says when he hears that, he just senses this overwhelming, enveloping love from God for him. And Absolutely. it just gives him security. And so your songs touch people in similar ways, too. Yep, yep. Uh, and I've heard that on, on on the Good Good Father song. We had an artist retreat the other night, and the voices of Lee were there. And only about 50 artists got together, just hungry artists, wanting to hear from God, got in one room, and they started singing that song. Now, that's not my style of music, but more I, the more I heard it, I said, man, that came from God. That came from God. And that's the reason I tell people who get critical of music style, I say, yeah, keep open, keep open. God speaks in all kind of ways. Yes, he does. You know, and he may just sneak up on you on a song. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, you know, and, I, and, you know, and I'm aware of the criticism in the church today about uh, the new music and the old, old music. The point is, uh, the, uh, the Psalmist David said, sing it to the Lord a new song. So, I mean... I'm, I'm glad back in 1965 when these two young school teachers came along and God gave us a new song, there were people that held their arms open and said, I like that. Yes. That, you know, I'm, I'm glad they weren't closed. Well, a few of them were closed, but, <laughs> but, but, but we snuck up on them, too. <laughs> Is there any new projects on the horizon? Are you writing a book or anything that we should be looking for in the near future? 
we're always, we just got a brand new project just came out with a vocal band. It's the best thing we've ever done. That sounds like a broken record, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But trust me, I dare everybody who comes to that program uh, on the 10th, they take one of those home. And if it's not the best thing they've ever put on, put in their, uh, their record player, or I call them record players, send it back. Send it back. Bill, I know you've helped to launch the singing careers of several great gospel musicians and singers, including Sandy Patty. I just did an interview with Sandy a few weeks ago promoting her farewell tour. Do you ever think about having a final Gaither tour? Yeah, I'm going to call it, this could be my last one. <laughs> hey, print that. Or, 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 you know, this is not a, a, a newspaper, but tell the folks that. This could be my last time in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is, is, is that a great idea? That's a great idea. You know what? That is true for an 80-year-old. And can I tell you something else, Byron? How old are you? I'm 54 years old. Okay. It could be your last day. In, uh, it could be your last day. Of, I hope it's not. But you know what? we got to look realistically at life. I've been doing this for a long time. Now, my chances of it being the last time I'm at Memphis are more than your chances, <laughs> you know, because you're younger. None of us have any guarantees. So when they say, when are you going to do your farewell tour? I say, this could be it. This could be it. <laughs> this could be it. So all you Memphis people that think you might see me next year, you better get the ticket this year. <laughs> I'm surprised by all the hard times Mark Lowry gives you over the years. You haven't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any upcoming new gospel talent? I know you are a promoter of new music and young talent coming out. Anything new on the horizon that we should be listening to their music, checking out? Jim Brady Trio. Uh, I, I don't think their new uh, their, their new project is out yet, but I helped them get a new singer. His, his name is Lake Jones, and he is a kid that I've, you know, I keep my eye on young talent, and they're all around, and they, we just keep uh, cataloging good uh, young talent. And all of them, I say, finish college first, then we'll talk. And so when they get out of college, Lake said, okay, Bill, are you ready for me for the vocal band? I said, I don't have any openings in the vocal band, but I have got a, a young couple, Jim uh, and Melissa Brady. They're sweet, sweet kids. You need to look at them. They need to look at you. That's a good uh, young group. I don't think the new project is out yet because he just came to them, I think, in April, and they're working on it. But that's a good a new group. And I tell you another a good new group in the southern field, and that is um, the Neelands. And they have taken... Uh, 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 they, they've taken Rex was the daddy and he died and Kelly and her husband and their two daughters are unbelievable they uh, they can do all different kind of style of stuff I think they're very good when you think about the future Gaither generations what do you hope that they will carry with them as they reflect on your life and the life that you live what type of legacy do you hope that you will leave Gaither generation future I think there are times that, that only the performer himself, the uh, singer, knows what is good and what is not as good. And I hope that they will keep quality of their talent at a high level, I, I, and not necessarily in this order either. And I hope they will keep the quality of the spirit of what they do and the source, which is, uh, which is our Lord, uh, at a high, high level. And I... Uh, and I would hope that they they would understand that even though people sometimes accept less, that they are called to a higher standard. I think that's also true with our public leaders. Uh, we've had to accept less, but I hope that uh, the person himself, when he realizes how serious his commitment is, and I'm not talking about any specific uh, a position in life because uh, you know if you're if you're a teacher of a class and a local a school system you've been called to a high high level yes and to whom much is given much is required bill that's a good word talking about the gaither homecoming christmas spectacular the lander center south haven mississippi saturday december 10th uh what is our bot radio network listeners who come out what are they going to experience at this event a lot of joy, a lot of optimism, and especially in a year where uh, it's been depressing at times. I think they're going to go out feeling the hopes and fears of all the years are in good, good hands. 
and we don't have to worry about it. That's number one. Number two, they're going to hear a lot of great singing. Number three, they're going to have a whole lot of fun. Yeah. If you haven't been, I'm telling you, you're going to have fun. Again, the concert is at the Lander Center, Saturday, December 10th, the Gaither Homecoming Christmas Spectacular. Be sure and get your tickets. Go to Ticketmaster.com. You can charge by phone by calling 800-745-3000. Don't forget to visit Gaither.com for all kinds of information about the Gaither travels, music, and good resource right there at Gaither.com. You can also get your tickets at the Lander Center box office. And groups now, we encourage church groups to come out, Sunday school classes, by Bible groups or neighborhoods. Come on out as groups. You can call 855-484-1991 to get those group rates. Mr. Bill Gaither, thank you so much for another great visit for Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and Gloria. Thanks for joining Bot Radio Network. Byron, blessings to you and especially during this season. Thank you for all you do there uh, for our ministry, even when we're not in town there. Blessings. Have a good day.